Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to go over a tutorial where we convert a surface that was generated from an STL format into a computational fluid dynamics three-dimensional mesh, a solid mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a STL surface for, uh, into FEBIO Studio. So please make sure that for today, you update FEBIO Studio to the latest development version. So I'll remind you that you can do this by going to, for example, the preferences menu on the Mac, say auto update and update to the development version, which in my case, the software is up to date. What we're gonna do is we're gonna import a um, SDL surface that is made available to us uh, from the Gmesh open source software. Here is the website for Gmesh and you can actually you know, uh, download the software for different operating systems and you're gonna be able to find the file that we're gonna use today. So I'm gonna start a new model. Since my ultimate goal is to do fluid mechanics analysis, I'm going to select the fluid mechanics uh, solver or module, and then I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna say import geometry. When I do import geometry, I'm gonna to navigate to the folder on my computer where the Gmesh software is located. In my case, it's the applications folder, Gmesh, and then I'm gonna look for the folder called examples, and within it, there's an API, and this is the file that I want to use. It's called aneurysmdata.stl. I'm going to open this file, and it's going to show up here, and you can see it's a very nice, clean STL surface. This is not generated from noisy data. This has already been cleaned. So, you you know, we're starting from a mesh that is very regular and, you know, um, well-behaved, if you want. So what we're going to do is we notice that, of course, that the, it's a hollow surface. So the first thing that we need to do is we really need to select this part and we need to close these holes. We're going to do this by going to the build panel and go to the edit, you know, sub panel. And within it, I'm going to click on fix mesh and under the task, I'm going to select fill all the holes. Then I'll say apply and all the holes have been filled, which looks great. Now I'm going to turn off the mesh by uh, pressing on the M key on the keyboard for mesh. And what you notice is that the uh, surfaces that are created don't have edges defined. That's because there was no automatic partitioning done in this process. So I'm going to partition the surface by selecting you know, the faces that I want. I'm going to select connected and I'm going to keep the default that the surface normals should deviate by no more than 30 degrees for my selection. I'm going to select this surface. I'm going to click on partition and I'll say apply. And if I deselect it, you can see a dark edge showing up. And I'm gonna repeat this procedure with these other two faces. I'll say apply, and then I'll say apply. And this is great. Now I'll turn the mesh back on. Um, there's no harm, of course, at this point to actually save this file. So I'm gonna save it on my desktop and I'm gonna call it CFD tutorial three. Um, now, this particular file that you see here, you can see that the surface has pretty large triangles on the faces that we close, so it's not great. And it has some fairly regular, but not perfectly regular triangles in this location. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the MMG remesh feature to remesh this surface. And however, what I notice is it's asking me for the element size that I want. And I don't really know what this element size is just by eyeballing. However, I can go to the mesh inspector. When I do, uh, I have various uh, variables that I can use to figure out the size of the element. So I'm gonna pick the maximum element edge length. And you can see I get a distribution here. And the distribution uh, includes some large triangles which come from the faces that I close, the holes that I close. But mostly, most of these faces have a size of one, right? So I'm gonna select, I'm gonna say that I would like a size of one to replicate this particular feature, whatever units were for this particular file that was imported, presumably millimeters, but not necessarily, I'm gonna say that I want the size of one millimeter. So I'm gonna come here and I'll request the size of one millimeter. For the minimum element size, I don't want too much variation, so I'll say 0.9. And the global house store value, this is an MMG software. You can go to the MMG website and you can actually navigate to the documentation and you'll see that the explanation of the Hausdorff distance is given here. I'm not gonna read it in detail for you. I just wanna bring it up so that you're aware that you can look up the meaning of these variables. I'm gonna pick a value of 0.1 and then I'll say apply. And if you pay attention, you will see that now we've generated a mesh that looks fairly regular on the surface. Let me turn off the mesh. Luckily, the boundaries are that I had defined, the edges that I had defined are still defined properly. 
So now I have a very well behaved surface. It's still a hollow surface. How do I know it's a hollow surface? I can take a plane cut through it and I can see that it's a hollow surface. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. Now I need to fill it. And the way to fill it is to actually go to the meshing tool. And the only option available here for solid mesh is TetGen. So TetGen is another open source software that we can use to mesh. And it asks me for the element size. I'm gonna select one once again to keep it consistent. And I'm not gonna allow splitting of the faces. I don't want any of the faces to become smaller than they are already. Then I'm gonna click on apply and it's gonna take a few seconds. And you don't see much of a change. Why? Because what um, TetGen did is fill in the inside with uh, tetrahedra. So if I click now on the mesh inspector, suddenly there are no more triangles. There are only tetrahedra in this particular mesh. Once again, you can use a sectioning tool. You can see that there's elements inside, but it's easier to click on the option to hide elements. This way, it'll just hide elements on either side of the plane, and I can play with the offset. I can move my cursor to the left and to the right. It'll change the offset. You can see the size of the elements inside. It's very nice. It's comparable to the size of the elements on the surface. So these are all the tools that let you inspect the mesh inside and out. Now that I have this, I'm ready to convert this mesh to an editable mesh. And normally, uh, this is it, we're done. We have the mesh that we want, but for computational fluid dynamics analysis, I really need to create a thin layer of elements, a boundary layer mesh, a biased mesh near the boundary, because that's where the velocity is gonna go to zero as a no slip boundary condition on the wall. And we already have said in previous tutorials that in FE Bio, the CFD solver expects you to have a nice biased mesh. Normally you would click on the boundary layer tool to create this biased mesh, but I wanna tell you here and from the outset that when you generate a mesh with TetGen, the boundary layer tool is likely not to work. It just has to do with the way that TetGen generates the elements. The good news is we can remesh this one more time. So remember we meshed the solid mesh with TetGen. We're gonna do an MMG remesh. And now the MMG remesh will work with the tetrahedral elements, not the triangular elements, but I'll still use the same parameters that we used earlier. Why complicate our lives? I'll still use 1.9 and 0.1. I'll say apply. You're barely gonna see a change in the mesh, but essentially it's no longer a tetchen mesh. It's now a MMG mesh. I'm gonna save this one more time. I'm ready to use the boundary layer tool. So I need to first select the outer surface and I'm gonna select faces that are connected, but I wanna connect with the surfaces that make that have um, up to 180 degree difference in the normals. This way it'll select the entire lateral surface, but not the cross sections. That's what I wanna do. Then I'm gonna select five segments. I wanna create five layers of elements. Each layer becomes twice as thick as the previous one starting from the wall. So that's where we're gonna have the thinnest one. When I click apply, um, the, this boundary layer tool is going to think for a little while, and then it's going to produce a mesh which has the boundary layer, which is exactly what I want. Now, I'm going to um, take a quick look, turn off the mesh, and I can see that this particular cross-section remains defined, but here, for some reason, the partitioning is gone. So i got to go back and redo the partitioning, but this time on the 3D mesh, I'll reset the surface normals to deviate no more than 30 degrees. I'll select this surface, I'll select the partition tool here and I'll say apply. And then I'll repeat it here and I'll say uh, apply. And now we would be able to apply boundary conditions on these faces, just like we can apply boundary conditions on these faces. Basically we're done. I'm not going to do a CFD analysis because at this point it's a straightforward procedure, but I can assure you that this mesh will work really well because of the boundary layer tool. So um, I'll remind you that the FEBio team and the FBio software can be found at these particular, at the, the FBI.org website. And here's the team as currently formed. Thank you for your attention today. Take care.